Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi, Consultant in Reproductive Medicine and Surgery. I'm planning to discuss another case which has been sent to me. This is a case of polycystic ovarian syndrome. She requires a withdrawal bleed to get her a period. FSH of 4.5, LH of 8, AMH of 5.5, I think nanogram per ml. Antral follicle count between 22 and 30. Androgens are normal. Letrozole was started 2.5 mg for 5 days. Continued with HMG 75 into 6 days. And 2 mg of dexamethasone. Scan on day 11 after 5 days of letrozole and 6 days of HMG suggested at there were three follicles, 12.5 millimeter. The endometrium was 3.5 millimeter. HMG was continued for a further two days. Follicles got to 17 millimeter. Endometrium to 5.6. The stimulation was stopped. Proganava was continued, I believe, along with Ecosporin and L-arginine and the ET eventually dropped to 3.6 and the cycle was abandoned. So what do we do in this case? When you look at her FSH, LH, AMH, it does not seem very worrying. But what seems worrying is her antral follicle count. I know that a lot of people will not measure volume, will not measure the thickle element that is present. God often remember that follicles move from an androgenic environment to a, an estrogenic environment. And what moves that? It is FSH. FSH allows the movement from an androgenic environment to an estrogenic environment. In this case, let's go to one aspect. In my opinion, I think the cycle was abandoned a bit early. Yes, there was a multifollicular response. And if you look at the, the folliculogram, which is around, you will see that it, it was a multifollicular response. And this is one of the things which can happen, is whatever dose you choose, with an antral follicle that is that high, you're more likely to get a multifollicular response. Now, what would I do in this case? You've seen an endometrium change. You've seen it change from 3. 5 to 5.6. Within two days, there's been a more rapid growth of the follicles, but there's also been an endometrium that has moved by 2 millimeter. Yes, it is not ideal. What I would, would, I, would have I done? If there's no LH surge, I would have continued the stimulation and seen if the growth of the follicles pre ovulatory gave you the best endometrium. Why do I say so? I say so because closer to ovulation, the endometrium takes a jump, a surge to reach the optimal. Often we keep it fixed in our head that trigger has to happen at 18 millimeter. And you have seen through my previous lectures that in, at least in Clomid and Letrozole, that trigger at 18 may not be the right trigger. If you're seeing a thin endometrium, go back on stimulation. Don't jump to the conclusion. Don't go and think there's something wrong with the endometrium. Yes, in PCOS, endometrium can get worsened because of high androgens. Here, the androgens are not high. My second query is, yes, suppression by steroids may work, but it is dangerous. These women need steroids over a long period, which in fact creates more problems. Unless an endocrinologist tells me to put somebody in steroids for an adrenal component, I do not. I think it eventually harms the patient rather than improving the outcome. Now, what would I do in the next cycle? In the next cycle, I think give her letrozole, but give her 5 milligram letrozole. Why? Because if you see, 
5 milligrams seems to give you a better response compared to her PCO. 25 odd follicles is a huge number of follicles. Put her on 5. But equally, start her on HMG at the same time. Or start on HMG in alternate days. You can choose what you want to do. It does not matter what protocol. Get that thing out of your head that they are fixed protocols. Conferences that tell you fixed protocols are completely confusing you. When you, those who have come for the course will know that there are six, seven, eight, nine, ten protocols of stimulating the ovaries on a mild stimulation. Try that out. Try and make the stimulation more prolonged, which means start her on FSH of 50 along with letrozole. It lowers the amount of FSH you need. Prolong it to 14 days. I think this, there is nothing wrong with the endometrium. The reason is, I think, is because the androgen levels are fine. I think this ovary will respond. The risk is of an over response. The anterior follicles tell you far more than just the AMH. The AMH tells you the resistance the follicles face. Anterior follicles tell you a very different story. They both are telling you different stories of how to stimulate. And those of us who realize how AMH versus anterior follicle work will be able to get the best outcome in this case. Thank you.